Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here. In uh, this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure router on a stick on Cisco iOS. But before I show you how to configure it, I need to explain to you what is exactly router on a stick. So that means we need to know how we can assign the VLANs and then uh, to the devices. And then how can we use the router to be like a router on a stick to be able to do the uh, routing between these VLANs. So all those details I'm going to show you in uh, this video, I'm going to explain it to you. And then I'm going to show you how you can configure the uh, router on a stick. But not only that, I'm going also to show you how you can configure the VLANs, how you can also configure the ports to be access ports or also to be trunk ports. And then at the end, we are going to implement a test to see if this configuration is going to work or not. So as you can see here, we have a lab of nine points. But before I start doing those points, let's go to the lab scenario to explain to you what we have as a scenario. And then I will come back to the points and start doing them. So this is our scenario. Actually, what you see here, you see that router 2 is inside VLAN 10, which has this IP. Router 3 has uh, also uh, uh, an IP, and he is on VLAN 20. So all what you see here, we are going to configure. Because at this moment, I do have this router connected to a switch, and this switch connected to two other routers. But they don't have any configuration, which is a blank configuration. So I'm going to start doing that from scratch. But before I start doing that, let me explain to you what is the router on a stick. So let's imagine that at the end we put a router 2, which is on VLAN 10 and has this IP. You can see it has an IP of 192.10.254, which is different than this router, which is on VLAN 20, which has another IP, which is 192.20.254. So those are two network IDs because we know that on VLANs, we have to assign for each VLAN a subnet by itself, a network ID, which is different from the one which is on the other VLAN. So I'm going to show you how we can configure that. But now what is router 2 and router 3? They are nothing more than you have to consider them as PCs. Okay, because I don't have now two computers to connect, so I put two routers. So those we have to think them as uh, end devices. So I'm going to configure this switch uh, to have this port on VLAN. Let me just change the color so we know. So let's say that this port is on VLAN 10, and this port we make it on VLAN 20. So there are access ports because they are connected to the and devices. So this is VLAN 10 and this is VLAN 20. That means they cannot communicate to each other. And this switch which I have here is a layer 2 switch. So he cannot do what we call it the inter-VLAN routing by itself. So now we want, for example, that router 2 to be able also to reach router 3. At this moment, it's not possible because we have divided them. We put them into two different VLANs, so it's not going to work. So now you have to remember that this port is an access port. And this port also, which is on the switch, is also an access port. Access means they are connected to end devices. Very good. So now what I want is that this router 2 to be able to reach router 3 and router 3 to be able to reach router 2. So in this case, what I need, I need a layer 3 device to do it for me, the routing. And in this case, we have here the router 1. So what you need now to do is that on this port, which is the gigabit 0 over 0 of the uh, port of the switch, then you make it trunk. So I make this port a trunk port. And then over here, I have to create two sub interfaces on router 1. So something you have to think of like this one. So this is router 1. This is fast Ethernet 0 over 0. I create two sub interfaces. One is this fast Ethernet 0 over 0 dot 10. This means that this is for the VLAN 10. And the other one, one the fast Ethernet 0 over 0 dot 20, this is for VLAN 20. All right. So this fast Ethernet 0 over 0 dot 10 is going to be the gateway for the uh, devices which are on VLAN 10, which is router 2. And fast Ethernet 0 over 0 dot 20 is going to be the gateway for the devices which are on VLAN 20. In this case, it is router 3. All right, so that's what I need to do here on uh, this router. I create two sub interfaces. I make them also trunk. So I will make one trunk for the VLAN 20 and one trunk for VLAN 10 on the sub interfaces. All right, so I make them trunk. Then in this case, what's going to happen when, for example, router 2 is going to ping to the IP of router 3, then he will send his traffic. You see it is in red. All right, so it goes here. 
then the switch will send it on his trunk port to here so this is the trunk port but it goes to the fast internet 0 over 0 dot 10 then the router has inside his routing table now you see that he can reach uh, the IP 192.16.10.0 but also 192.16.20.0 then what he do he make routing he say okay you want to go to 20.0 this is how you can go and then he this is going this way then he will send them this way it goes to the switch then those comes over here the packet and then he reached this router now this router wants to answer back for the ping then he sent the ping back the ping reply on his traffic to the switch the switch send them inside the trunk port then he will send it make a routing in his routing table router one then he will send this to the network which is 192.6.10 it comes to the switch and then from the switch you will send it to here then you have a reply back so this is what the routing on the stick that's why we call it router on a stick because it is on a stick that means it is it's sitting in a place where it's making routing for the vlans so that means those uh, router 2 and router 3 can reach to each other so this is the whole idea of the router on a stick if we didn't have a router which is layer 3 then it's not possible for the vlans uh, to be able to communicate each other i mean the devices inside those vlans they're not able to communicate to each other even though they are connected physically to the same switch but they don't see each other all right so this is what we're going to do in this lab i'm going to start from scratch starting router configuring router to router c putting ip address then on the switch i make the vlans i make the ports access and trunk then we go to router one we make the sub interfaces and then we will see if it's gonna work so let's go now back to the points and start doing that Port number one, configure router two and router three with IP addresses uh, on their fast internet zero over zero interfaces as per the graph. So let me just put the graph here and uh, let's directly go to router two and router three. So I want router two and router three to be uh, just computer devices, okay? So I just want to put IP addresses and gateway for them. So we go to router two first, I make configure terminal and to make them uh, not a router just as devices you have to disable the routing so you have to say no ip routing so when you say no ip routing that means this router doesn't have any more the functionality of the router now i will go to the interface pass it in as zero over zero i will put an ip address 192.168.10. Uh, in this case 254 as per the graph and then 255, 255.255.0, no shutdown. But also remember, when you put IP on your computer, you also put a gateway, right? And who is going to be the gateway for this router? The IP is going to be, let me just write it, the comment is IP default gateway. The IP should be 192.168.10.1. And this IP, 192.168.10.1, I'm going to put it on the sub interface for the VLAN 10 that I'm going to create it on the router 1. All right, so this is his gateway. All right, so now I will save the configuration and uh, this is done on router 2. Let's go to router 3. So remember, 192.10.1, that is, we need to put it on IP on the sub interface of router 1. So we go to router 3, configure terminal, no IP routing. And then I go to the interface fast internet 0 over 0 IP address 192.168.20.254.255.255.255.0 and now no shutdown and we don't forget to put the default gateway IP default gateway 192.168.20.1 and this is going to be an IP which I'm going to put it on the sub interface of router 1 which is belonging for VLAN 20 and that's it so that's what I need to do on the router 2 and router 3 Point number 1 is done Point number 2 configure VLAN 10 and VLAN 10 20 on the switch on switch 1 so now we have to just configure the VLANs because the switch it doesn't have VLANs why we need to put VLAN 10 and 20 because we need to assign the ports of the switch to VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So I just want to say here on the switch, uh, VLAN 10 and then VLAN 20. 
So that's what I need to do. If I say do show VLAN, now we can see that uh, VLAN 10, so it's there, but uh, VLAN 20 not. So let me just uh, write it again, VLAN 20. And now do show VLAN. Yes, here we go. So we have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 that are now created on this uh, switch. And you can see that the, the interface gigabit 0 over 1 and 0 over 2, they are by default on uh, the VLAN 1. So we have now to move them from VLAN 1. We put gigabit 0 over 1 inside VLAN 10 and gigabit 0 over 2 inside VLAN 20 because the gigabit 0 over 1 is connected to router 2 and gigabit 0 over Two is connected to router 3. Point number 2 is done. Point number 3, put interface gigabit 0 over 1 on VLAN 10 and add interface gigabit 0 over 2 on VLAN 20 and uh, make those ports as access ports. Why access ports? Because remember, they are connected to end devices. So we have to make them access ports. So let's go back to the switch and uh, let's uh, clear here, go up. All right, very good. So now I need to go to the interface gigabit 0 over 1 and here I have to say switch port mod access so I make I make it access and then I will say switch port access VLAN and then I put it inside VLAN 10. So I'm putting this interface gigabit 0 over 1 of the switch inside VLAN 10. So router 2 belongs to VLAN 10. Now I will go to the interface gigabit 0 over 2. Again, switch port mode access because it's connected to end device. And then switch port access VLAN 20. So now if I make, uh, for example, show VLAN again, we should see that gigabit 0 over 1, it is inside VLAN 10 and gigabit 0 over 2 is inside VLAN 20. Very good. So now we have the router 2 and router 3 that are on two different VLANs. Port number 3 is done. Port number 4 configure gigabit 0 over 0 on the switch 1 as a trunk port. So if we go to the picture, now we have this port is an access port. It is on VLAN 10. This port is a access port. It is on VLAN 20. Now for the VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 to be able to go and pass from the switch to the router, then this port over here, let me just uh, pick up another color. This port should be a trunk port. Trunk port means he can send at the same time traffic for VLAN 10 and traffic for VLAN 20. All right, so to make a trunk port, we have to use an encapsulation. And the encapsulation, which is uh, the uh, non-proprietary uh, encapsulation, so that means it's a uh, standard default is the uh, .1Q. So we have to make this port as a trunk port and we use .1Q. All right, so let's do that. We go back to the switch and we go to the interface. In this case, it's gonna be interface gigabit zero over zero. And we have to say switch port mode. And if I make here switch port mode, if I make question mark, you see we have access and then we have a trunk. That's what I need to use. So switch port mode trunk and then enter. Now, because it's saying that the encapsulation on uh, this uh, interface is auto, so first we need to make it dot one q. So switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q. So that's what I need to do. And then now I say switch port mode trunk. So now it is working. So if I now say do for example show interface gigabit zero over zero. So actually the comment should be do show interface, do show interface gigabit zero over zero switch port, switch port. Yes. So you can see that uh, this interface, which is gigabit zero over zero, this one, it is now having the administrative mode trunk and operational mode trunk and it is using the encapsulation.1q. So that means this interface is a trunk interface. Port number four, so we have finished the configuration on the switch. So as a review, I put IP addresses on the routers. 
a default gateway on the switch i made the ports which are connected to router 2 and router c i made them as access port and i put uh, gigabit 0 over 1 on vlan 10 gigabit 0 over 2 on vlan 20 then i made gigabit 0 over 0 as a trunk port now we have to start working on the router on router 1 we have to bring the interface faster than 0 over 0 up and configure two sub interfaces so why sub interfaces because one is going to be for vlan 10 and one is going to be for vlan 20. so let's do that let's go now to the router and uh, we go to the interface which is connected physically to the switch which is fast internet 0 over 0 now i have to say no shutdown i'll bring it up all right so that's what i need to do you see now this interface is up very good now i have to create sub interfaces so interface fast internet 0 over 0 dot 10 so this is one sub interface and another sub-interface, so let's also do no shutdown. Another sub-interface, I'm going to create interface fast ethernet 0 over 0 dot 20, no shutdown. So now if I do say here, do show IP interface brief. So you can see that I do have now the two sub-interfaces, which are over here. Fast Ethernet 0 over 0 0.10 and Fast Ethernet 0 over 0 0.20, they are up. Now I need to put IP address on them and I need to make them trunk port. And I need also to say that this is belong to VLAN 10 and this belongs to VLAN 20. All right, so let's see what we need to do now in the upcoming point. Point number five is done. Point number six, put an IP of 192.10.1. Remember, we put this IP on the gateway of router 2, if you remember. So this IP should be on Fast Ethernet 0 over 0 0.10, enable dot one q encapsulation and uh, assign it to VLAN 10. Very good. So let's go to the router. I will make point 6 on point 7 because also the this is almost the same, but for two different VLAN. So from here I have to go to the interface fast 10 at 0 over 0 0.10 and uh, I have to uh, make the encapsulation dot one q and then i have to say that this sub interface belongs to vlan 10. that's it you see so when you say here encapsulation dot one q and question mark then it says for which vlan you want to put it and then we put it in vlan 10. and we need to put the ip address ip address 192.168.10.1 255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.255.
And uh, from router 2, we have to ping to 192, once you say dot, in this case, 20.254. Remember, 20.254, if you look to the picture, it is for router 3, the IP of router 3. Enter. So let's have a look. The first is not working, and then it's working. So normal, the first packet drop because there is an ARP request going to happen, so it's working. You see now, router 2 is able to ping to router 3, and if we go to router 3, and let's also clear here, and from router 3, if I ping to 192.168.10.254, so that is 10, correct? That is from router 3 to router 2, enter, and here we go. So yeah, this is the configuration I showed you in front of you, how you can configure the router on stick, but not only that, I have showed you everything, also part of it, the VLAN and also the end devices, how you have to put the IP addresses and make the router not uh, as having the routing capability. Point number nine is done. And uh, with this point, I have showed you the whole configuration for the router on stick on Cisco IOS. It's a very important topic, very nice topic. It's also somehow not very clear for a lot of students who are uh, studying Cisco, but I hope that uh, this video makes it more clear for you. So this is what I wanted to show you in this uh, video. I hope it was informative for you and I will see you in the upcoming videos.